Hello, it's Alexandra Morton here on uh, April the 3rd, 2014, with an update on what's happening with salmon farms. Things are changing rapidly, and uh, I think that the opportunity to fix this is, is slipping away very quickly. So at the beginning of this year, uh, Stephen Harper opened the BC Coast to farm salmon expansion. Days later, Marine Harvest was listed on the New York Stock Exchange and they said that they planned to expand and that they were looking for North American investment. Shortly thereafter, uh, the Senate Standing Committee on Fisheries and Oceans began to uh, research aquaculture regulation and whether it could be streamlined. In particular, they're answering the question, should aquaculture have its own standalone aquaculture act. Now just to be clear, aquaculture includes growing shellfish, it also includes land-based systems, but in British Columbia, uh, clearly the, the, the biggest contentious issue is the three Norwegian salmon farming companies that make up 98% of the industry. These are companies with head offices in Norway. And uh, on February 25th, DFO testified in front of this committee, and it was, um, it was pretty shocking to read that David Bevan said that Section 36 of the Fisheries Act was a critical impediment to the salmon farming industry. Section 36 prohibits the release of chemicals into the water that are known to kill fish. And the reason this is an impediment to the salmon farming industry is because they need to kill sea lice. Sea lice are a form of crustacean. So are lobster, so are shrimp, so are prawns. So is the zooplankton, some of the zooplankton that our wild salmon feed on when they first come out of the rivers. So you would think this might be a red flag to the senators that an industry that absolutely it's critical to them that they're able to release chemicals into the prime migration areas of Canadian fisheries, uh, that they need to release deleterious substances into those areas, you'd think the senators might see that and say, you know what, we understand your need to do that, but really, you don't belong in our wild fisheries. We'll find a place for you in tanks, on land. Um, on March 26th, I was invited to testify in front of this committee. They came out to British Columbia. And uh, while I was discussing my science, uh, the viral tracking that I'm doing, Senator McInnes said that a lie can be heard halfway around the world while the truth is still getting its boots on. It's, uh, it's pretty serious to, to suggest that a scientist is lying. Uh, it, it's really, it's, it's about the most serious uh, statement you can make to a scientist. And uh, I don't know if McInnes has ever submitted a paper for scientific review. I, I, I think probably not. But uh, the journals are very careful. They're looking for untruths. They're looking for shortcuts. They're looking for science that is not valid. But they didn't find that with me. I have had all my work published. So I, uh, I had to wonder about that. Um, one of the, the salmon farmers testified the same day that sea lice are a political problem. They really aren't a biological problem. But that's not really the case because in Norway, marine harvest is very concerned about sea lice. And um, they're telling the world that uh, there's a quote from the CEO of marine harvest saying, whoever solves sea lice, come and see me because we need help. And he lists sea lice as the biggest problem the salmon farming industry faces in Norway. What is an industry that has not solved a fundamental problem like sea lice? What is it doing expanding in British Columbia, telling government that it's critical that they're able to have sea louse drugs? Because as far as I can see, we're going to go down the same path as Norway. We're going to use all these different drugs you know, with the various impacts, and they are still going to have the problem. So uh, this is uh, this is a pretty serious issue. Um, 
One of the senators went public two days after the hearings in Nanaimo, and she really said it's a green light. There's tremendous opportunity for farming salmon in British Columbia. She really doesn't think that fish farms kill salmon. Justice Cohen, $26 million process, also tasked by Stephen Harper uh, with scientific report, teams of lawyers, hundreds of hours of testimony. He said, I therefore conclude that the potential impact of salmon farms on the Fraser Sockeye is serious or irreversible. So we have two really different positions here. One person saying, yeah, green, good to go. The other one is saying, you know, we really got to look at these migration routes of wild salmon and perhaps get them off of there. The, the statements by Senator Rain are going to be seen by investors. They're going to see a senator in Canada is saying, it's green light go. And um, it, this concerns me because Marine Harvest and other companies are looking for investment and this is going to be a clear signal that Canada is, is willing to take all the risks associated with this industry. Now, the biggest thing these senators are looking at is whether or not to grant aquaculture its own standalone aquaculture act. So aquaculture includes uh, shellfish and land-based, but if I may use the term, the problem child here is salmon farms. I don't hear any conflict about uh, fish farms on land, uh, many different species. There is conflict about shellfish, but it is localized and the people involved seem to think that there are solutions to it. It's much smaller companies. Key to the Aquaculture Act, the fish farmers want to be able to own their fish. They've been wanting to own their fish since the 1980s when they first came to Canada. And you have to really think about this. So in Canada, it's against the Constitution, or it's outside the Constitution of Canada to, to try to own a fish in the ocean. And uh, in, in 2009, BC Supreme Court said it's the same ocean inside the pen as outside the pen. And we talked about it a lot. Do they own their fish or not? But it was decided because when their fish get out, they need a fishing license to go get them. A farmer does not need a hunting license to go get his cattle, but a fish farmer needs a fishing license to go get his fish. So clearly he does not own them. If the, the fish farm industry is given uh, ownership of their fish. What happens when the fish get out? Do they own them then? What happens if there's a big school of Atlantic salmon running around the Pacific? Will uh, commercial fishermen be able to intercept them? What happens when wild fish get into the pens? Who owns those? Because there's tons of herring in these farms. And what about those wild fish with the lice on them and the viruses and the bacteria? Because some level of every population of wild animals does carry disease pathogens. Will they be allowed to go by the private fish? Now remember, these private fish will be protected by corporate law, uh, laws about free trade, and big industrial lobbies. I don't see any lobbies for the wild salmon. I don't see any powerful group that has stepped up to protect wild salmon. So I think that when push comes to shove, we are going to be in a very different world when we have private salmon in the ocean. So when, when uh, Section 36 is removed and there's no recourse for fish farms, um, killing lobster, prawns, whatever, and when the industry owns their own fish, it's really over. There's really, there's really nothing I can do to fix that. Prior to that, I think there's a couple of very important things. One, talk to your MPs. Um, it's always worth a try. Number two, the Premier of British Columbia has to sign off on a license of occupation for every single salmon farm, basically a rental agreement to the industry, to each site. She has not publicly stated how she feels about this industry, so I think it's worth asking her, is she going to respect the Cohen Commission recommendations to get this industry off of our wild salmon migration routes or not? It'd be worth knowing. There's a change.org petition I have out there with over 100,000 people who have asked her not to renew these licenses. Third, I think we have to talk to the consumer. They are the ones fueling this. 
industry is all about the consumer. They are willing to change to suit the consumer. That's really the, the only group they are willing to change for. And so if the consumer said, hey, you know, we're not interested in buying a fish that has a reputation of uh, impacting wild fish. We don't want to buy a fish that takes ocean protein and runs it through the fish once and then dumps it all over the seafloor. <laughs> we just don't want to buy that. The industry will change. They will change rapidly. They are already investigating closed containment themselves because they have so much trouble with disease and sea lice. But to talk to the consumer isn't expensive. There is no way around that. You have to hire experts that know how to do it, and that's not me. I'm a biologist. You need to buy airspace, billboards, magazines, radio. You need to spend money to get out there. Salmon farmers are doing that. There's one ad um, for Schoona Bay. So there's a piece of farm sashimi, and it says, Another wild salmon saved. Really? How's that working? Because I don't see it. You know, fishing quotas are not set on farm salmon production yet. And of course, there's a lot of concern that they're actually impacting the wild fish. So if, uh, if you want to jump in, particularly you businessmen uh, who have, have wealth, there, there really needs to be something done here. And uh, you can contact me, go to alexandermorton.ca. Uh, or you can go to my blog, alexandramorton.typepad.com, where I will write out this, this whole um, presentation here. And, uh, you know, when we think about erring on the side of caution, what we're really saying is, what about the children? Because they will be here 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, and they will be in the world that we create. And I cannot see how they would not want millions of wild salmon coming back to this coast. And perhaps some highly innovative land-based aquaculture technology as well to help feed the world. But to pit the wild fish against these three companies, it does not make sense. You're, you're creating too fragile of a situation. This industry is saying they believe they have reached peak salmon. They are running out of fish to catch. There is concern that they are using the herring of this coast to feed their fish. And, you know, there's, there's aggressive herring fisheries that the, the Minister of Fisheries is trying to open. And First Nations are standing in her way and saying, you are not listening to your own scientists. We're not going to allow these fisheries to go on. So uh, I hope we can resolve this create aquaculture on land so there are jobs. Nobody wants to impact jobs of, of the local people of this coast. But let's not wipe out wild salmon because I believe we'll regret that forever. So thanks very much. Talk to you again.